Hi, my name is Dwayne Crawford and I'm the Fiber Product Line Manager at Belden. In this video, we're going to talk about getting to know the Belden Fiber Express Precision Installation Toolkit and connectors. Although the termination of the FX Brilliance Universal connectors can be done with no specialized tools, installation kits are available to provide the tools necessary to prepare the fiber, as well as provide a stable work platform to achieve optimal installation results. So let's get to know the parts of our kit. First of all, we're going to start with safety. Every kit includes a pair of safety glasses, and when we're working with fiber, we should make sure we're always wearing our safety glasses. Now, let's have a look at the other components of our kit. Let's start with the installation handle. The installation handle, this is the basic work platform that we're going to work for when we install our connectors. To the installation handle, we're going to add a couple of key parts. First, we're going to select the adapter type that matches the connector we want to install. If I want to use an LC connector, I'm going to select the LC adapter. We also have an ST adapter and an SC adapter. Once I've selected the adapter type I wish to use, I'm going to simply click it into the installation handle. Now I need to add my VFL to my installation handle. So in the bottom is where I'm going to install the VFL. The VFL has a protective cap, so I can simply remove that cap. And now I'm going to insert my VFL into the bottom of the handle. I'm going to slide it up till it hits the stopper and I'm just going to simply push it down till it clicks. I'm going to want to make sure that my batteries are good in my VFL. I can check that. I'm going to push the power button on the rear to turn the VFL on and then I'm going to push the gray button to activate the VFL. You'll notice if I push the button again, it's going to blink. If I push it a third time, it's going to turn off. What I want to make sure is that when I push the button that this green light comes on and I do see some laser coming out of the front. I do have to be careful. I do not want to stare into the end of that laser. So I'm just going to turn my VFL off for now. Once I have my VFL set up, I then need to put on the launch cord. So we have some different options for launch cords depending on which connector you're using. For ST or SC connectors, I'm going to want to make sure I'm using the, the larger ferrule versions. So I can simply attach that one end into the VFL and the other end into the adapter. For the LC version, I have an SC to LC cord. I'm going to remove my dust caps and I can simply connect that into my VFL and the other end into my installation handle. What I want to make sure of is every once in a while I'm going to want to inspect and clean the end faces of this launch cord. It is a standard connector, so it will wear out after several hundred uses. So I want to make sure that I'm checking them and replacing them as needed. Let's move on to some of the other tools in the installation kit. What we'll find is a pair of general purpose fiber strippers, Kevlar shears if we're cutting fiber or working with the uh, aramid strands. We're going to find a cleave inspection microscope. Although we use a precision cleaver that will give us consistent good results, every once in a while we're going to want to make sure that we check that cleave to ensure it is providing us the optimal results. We have a marker to mark the back of the uh, fiber as, so we know how deep we're going to install the fiber into the connector. We have a waste bottle to collect any of our sharps or scraps. And we have our precision cleaver. Um, what you'll notice about the precision cleaver is that it is suitable for cleaving both 900 micron and 250 micron fiber. So let's have a closer look at the precision cleaver. What we're going to notice is this version of the cleaver has a silver front. The silver front tells us that this is an auto-rotating version of the cleaver. That means it's good for up to 36,000 cleaves without ever having to change the blade. That should outlast the average installer. When we take a closer look, what we're going to notice inside the cleaver is there's two grooves. This side, of the, the groove on this side is for 900 micron fiber. The groove on this side is for 250 micron fiber. So when we're working with fiber, we want to make sure that the fiber is going to fit snugly in the groove and go all the way to the bottom of the groove. The other detail on this cleaver we want to be careful about and we want to watch is the buffer stopper. So all the way up here at the very front of the cleaver, you find a little black pad. 
This little black pad is what we call the buffer stopper. When we're using the cleaver, we want to make sure we're going to slide the fiber all the way up to the buffer stopper. We want to hit the buffer stopper, but we don't want to rest on top of the buffer stopper. If, we're, if, the, buffer, if the jacket of the, the fiber, the buffer, is sitting on the buffer stopper, we're not going to get a flat cleave. We're actually going to get a slightly angled cleave, which isn't good for us. Now, there's a button on the side of the cleaver, which we call the arming button. So before we cleave, we want to make sure that this button is pushed all the way in. We want to make sure that this button is pushed in before we lay the fiber into the cleaver. If we lay the fiber in and then push the uh, blade across, we may actually nick the fiber where we don't want to. And that will lead to breaks later when we try to install the fiber. Now that we have the uh, fiber armed, we have the fiber in the proper channel slid up to the buffer stopper. All we have to do is simply close the lid. You'll hear the activator slide across and we'll see that we've cleaved the fiber. What you're going to notice is that the fiber scrap is automatically handled inside the cleaver. It's going to go into the garbage collector. So that means you don't have to handle fiber scraps with your finger. We don't have to worry about getting poked by those fiber scraps. Then we can simply, at the end of the day, remove the drawer which contains all the fiber scraps and empty these into our, our fiber waste bin. So let's have a closer look at the fiber strippers. The fiber and strippers included in the kit are a basic type of stripper. What you're going to find is they have a little latching mechanism so we can open that arm and that will open up the stripper. From there we have three holes. The big hole is typically removed, used to remove the jacket. If we have two or three millimeter interconnect cable or breakout cable, we need to pull the jacket off. We're going to use that hole. The middle hole is usually for the first pass when I'm removing tight buffer. I'm going to want to remember to pull small segments of fiber with that hole to get the jacket off. If I try to take too much jacket off, I'm going to end up breaking the fiber. The small hole the very closest one to the middle is the one we use to get rid of the primary coating of the fiber. So we can strip that off. You'll see that come off as a, a little white residue. While we're talking about the fiber stripper, let's remember a couple other points. One, as I remove the primary coating off the fiber, I'm going to get a little acrylate buildup in the jaws. I'm going to want to make sure I clean that out between stripping. Um, if it is there, it may cause the fiber to chop. The other thing we're going to point out is strippers are a wear item. They will wear out eventually. The jaws will slightly get wider as we strip fiber. So we want to make sure that if we're running into problems, we do replace our fiber stripper. Also in the kit, you're going to find alcohol wipes. These alcohol wipes are intended to remove the primary coating off the fiber after we've stripped it. So that little bit of residue that's left, the alcohol will remove that nicely. The alcohol wipes are not intended to clean connector end faces. For that, we want to make sure we're using a proper connector end face cleaning solvent. Also in the kit, you're going to find a waste bottle. This plastic bottle is useful for handling all your sharp fiber scraps. So as you remove them from your cleaver, you're going to want to make sure you put them in here or any chops that you might make while stripping the fiber. You're going to want to make sure you put them in here so nobody gets hurt and gets poked by fiber. These waste bottles are disposable. So once you've filled your waste bottle and it's full of scraps, please don't empty it into a garbage. That's usually difficult for a cleaning person to understand the dangers of getting poked by fiber. So we want to make sure we dispose of this as a whole into the garbage and we have replacement items available from Belden. Finally, while we're talking about the kit and contents that are not included, let's talk about cleaning quickly. Cleaning is an appropriate part of installing fiber connectors and these supplies may need to be purchased separately. Typical supplies needed to finish a job would include end face cleaning solvent, some sort of end face cleaning material. In this case, I like the OptiPop cleaner. You may need to be able to clean ports. Something like a one click type of device is very good for getting inside a port to clean. And alternatively, stick swabs also work very well for cleaning out adapters. So there are some additional items that aren't included in your kit that may need to be purchased separately. For example, if you're terminating SCAPC connectors, angle polish connectors, or LC keyed connectors, we do have kits available as separate part numbers that provide the appropriate adapter and launch cord for your install handle. So let's have a closer look at the connector itself. This is the SC or Sam Charlie connector. Here is the ferrule at this end. Here is the boot at this end. 
And what we're looking at right here, this is the activator tab. This is like a little switch that activates the splice inside the connector. What you're going to notice here is that there's two sets of lines. The line closest to the ferrule is the smallest line. And when the activator tab is slid up and aligned with that set of lines, the splice mechanism inside the connector is open. And it means we can slide a fiber in and get it ready to terminate. Sliding the activator tab to the rear position, that's the, the longer lines closer to the boot, means the activator is closed. So that fiber is locked in and it's not going to move inside the connector once it's in the closed position. Okay, what about fiber grade? How do we know what fiber grade we're using and which connector to use? Well, we have a lot of different options and what I'm going to point out here. So for multi-mode, we can start with OM1. The default color for OM1 is beige. So this is how we know it's 62.5 fiber inside the connector. OM2 would be designated by black. OM3 is designated by the aqua connector body. OM4 would be the Erica Violet. That's the Belden standard connector color. The single mode, you can get in two colors depending on the polish used. So the blue body would indicate a flat polish and the green body would indicate an angled polish. Now, here's something you need to know about the Brilliance connectors for multi-mode. If we look at the three connectors for 50 micron, the OM2, the OM3, and the OM4, they all use OM4 fiber inside the connector. So you can actually interchange any of them. So if you would like to use Aqua with OM4, you can simply choose the OM3 connector and it will work perfectly fine. So every Brilliance connector can work with one of four boots. The default boot that ships with the Brilliance connectors is what we call the 900 micron boot. That's the short one of the boots. We also have three optional boots that can fit on any Brilliance Universal connector. Those would be the 250 micron boot if we're going to terminate 250 micron fiber, the 2 millimeter boot if we want to terminate onto jacketed 2 millimeter fiber, and the 3 millimeter boot if we want to terminate onto three millimeter jacketed fiber. So to give you an idea of what that looks like installed, here's the 250 micron boot installed. You can see that it controls the bend radius quite nicely. The 900 micron boot installed, again, controls the bend out of the back of the fiber. Here is the two millimeter jacketed boot. So it will actually clamp on to the Kevlar strands inside the jacket cable and that's what provides the retention force, that extra pull force that's needed for jacketed fiber. And again, a boot with a slightly larger opening at the back for three millimeter jacketed fiber, also clamping onto the Kevlar inside the connector, providing excellent retention force. So let's talk a little bit about the packaging. Let's have a look at some of the key features for the package. What we're going to find in the standard B25 pack, that's 25 connectors a package, is that if we break the little tab on the side for the label, that the front flap's going to lift up. And here you're going to find both instructions for 900 and 250 micron installation and jacketed installation. Through the little window, you'll be able to see the connector type that's included in the package. And you're going to find there's a little sticky glue dot inside here that keeps the inner sleeve from sliding out. If we simply just slide our finger in here, we can then pull the connectors out, remove the sleeve, and we're ready to start installing connectors. Now, this is a hermetically sealed package, so the connectors can sit on the shelf for as long as they need to without going bad. They're completely controlled and they're going to be free from dust when you're ready to use them. You're going to notice that in the connector package, there are strips and we can tear away various strips. We can easily tear them away. So if we only need a few connectors, we can take them to a job site pretty easily. Now, each one of those strips has a little ring on the top. That little ring can be used with a standard carabiner. We can poke it through that hole. Now we can hang this off of our toolkit or our belt for easy access. When I want to access a connector inside a pouch, all I have to do is simply push the connector through the foil backer. And what I'm going to find is both the boot and the connector inside. There you have it. That is a summary of the contents of the fiber kit and some of the key features for that kit. Be sure to check out the other fiber videos which are going to cover preparing the fiber, cleaving the fiber, and installing the connector on various types of fiber.